Thank you so much for watching this video. I just want to put a quick disclaimer up front. I'm not a professional storm shelter builder. This is just the way I built it. I think I built it really well, but um, certainly uh, I'm not a uh, consultant or anything in the construction uh, sector. So this is the storm shelter I built in 45 days part time. Thanks for watching. A uh, quick bit up front, that's me. Uh, after a hard days of work, amen, I built this completely by myself in 45 days. I first planned it and prayed for it and all that. It almost came out to 20,000 pounds total. That's in the bottom right hand corner. You'll see total pounds for the shelter. And I almost lifted 100,000 pounds between all the moving and lifting and all that. It cost me under $2,000 completely to build an 8x8 um, by about a six and a half foot high, a seven foot high shelter. So again, I just want to show you a few more pictures of myself to put a name with the face and to have you laugh at me. But uh, it was a great workout, about three or four hours every afternoon in a, about a 100 to 110 degree barn here in southwest, uh, south central Florida. Uh, first, I started, of course, with measuring and going around and planning things out. You know, you want to do this before you start just to make sure you have everything right. Then I laid the first row of uh, concrete. We're doing a dry stack with quick wall. You'll see it as we go along here. So you have to put the first row, of course, uh, to level it out and all that. And I got it pretty square. I did pretty good. Um, I was off a little bit at the end, but uh, because of the technique we're using here, please stay with me. It's very interesting. Uh, I, I don't have to put uh, cement in between or on the sides of the block, which of course saved me some time. I just stacked the block there. You know, a funny story about this real quick. My brother-in-law does work with concrete. He's from up north. And um, my wife had happened to be visiting him at the time. And he saw this picture. I just sent to my wife this random picture without any note. And I said, uh, maybe making progress or whatever. But I was measuring just how tall the rebar should be because there's a little discrepancy because of the cement I put on the bottom. And uh, he, 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 was a, he was just appalled that he thought I was going to stack the blocks like that. So I know you're probably going to watch this, uh, brother-in-law. So I, I really got a kick out of that. Um, uh, then I started to, of course, drill the holes here. Um, into the uh, cement slab. Um, good idea to use some gloves too when you're handling rebar, which I'm going to show you next. But I, I put the rebar in uh, every corner, as you can see here, uh, and also every block. Uh, I didn't put in every single hole, but every single block. Amen. And I added some rebar even after this picture too, which I don't uh, have that picture of. But anyway, I added one in every corner too. Ended up using over 100 bags uh, of cement, as you can see there, and the quick wall is on the right. That was one pallet. I had to order another pallet of, um, of um, cement. So over 100 bags of 80-pound cement to fill these holes. I did this all by hand, by the way. I went up uh, two rows at a time on the bottom. Um, and uh, I just mixed it with a little hand mixer I bought for $57 on eBay. It worked fantastic. Uh, so that wasn't a huge investment, amen. And as you can see, there's the first two rows that I did and the block filled with cement. And I'll tell you, it's really solid. So I kept on going up. I put a vertical rebar, as you're going to see. Uh, I'm going to pause for a few videos that I've taken to throughout this uh, entire video here. So I kept going up and filling and filling. And Day by day, uh, I was able to uh, make some great progress. Again, just part-time in the afternoon and completed the project in 45 days. So I'm going to let a very short video play, uh, actually a couple of them, and then I'll come back. Uh, I'm, this is going to explain the vertical rebar I put in between the fifth and uh, fourth and fifth row. And that's how I hit the blocks. Just with a hammer. That's the old school way. And that's where my rebar will sit. This is a corner block, so I need to cut this off too. And that's how you can do it the old-fashioned way, without using a saw. That's how you make a block out of rebar. I mean, a block for rebar. Bending the horizontal rebar. I just got my. I just put it right under my stack there. And um, I just lift up on it. That's all. 
it's a half inch for my vertical, so I've got five eight inch, I mean for my horizontal. And I just lift it up, give it a couple kicks, and you've got basically a nicely bent uh, piece of Reebok. So don't let that scare you. Praise the Lord. No problem. Placing the Reebok, I'm gonna tie it all in of course. So I'm placing the rebar. This is the last. I'm gonna put one row above this, but this is the last row. Okay, and then you can see my door opening here. Amen. So I'm just placing that rebar horizontally for the bond beam right across. Now make sure you tie it in here on this end. See how the other one starts there? I want to make sure you have at least a couple feet. Okay, and then bend the other one. Go all the way down. All right, so after filling the fourth and fifth row in, I continued up uh, row by row. Because the bucket was getting heavy, uh, you can see that's the little mixer I bought for 57 bucks. I didn't show the, the pot you hold. But anyway, it's just a simple mixer you can get on eBay. Now, any questions, you can reach out to me at the end of this video. I have my email. Uh, so I kept on going up. Uh, I think two rows at a time until the sixth row and then the seventh eighth ninth and tenth I went one row at a time so you're gonna see the completion of all ten rows uh, on the next picture and then I'm gonna let it go back to video and uh, surely I'll be back to narrate uh, the next part until the next video I took live um, ends okay so a quick update I'm ten rows up whoops sorry guys I'm ten rows up on my blocks I've got them fairly level, okay, and I don't know when's the last time I stopped off, but you can see I went in with two screws in each one of these, and then up here I just filled them up, amen? So I've got the screws in here, we're pretty, we're pretty close on the corners there. This will fill in, there's a little break there, but that'll fill in with the quick uh, wall that I'm going to be using. Any cracks and crevices, that's the beauty of using this quick wall, you know, you see I'm off a little bit there. When I put over the quick wall, boom, 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 all this stuff will fill in. See all these cracks? That'll fill in with quick wall, amen? So, got a lot done. I'm using these screws here, Spax screws, for the, um, to going through the concrete. You still have to drill through the concrete, but it was easier to go this way than to try to go diagonal. Just go straight in here, put two in. Then I'm gonna go up top here and show you. So, I've cemented. Um, and then I'll show you the door I just did. So I've cemented in all around the top. I did, I was going two rows at a time, and this time I went three rows. See, I just finished that today. Go all the way around. I'm gonna put my cross beams up there, which you'll see in a little bit. Now I left, there's my bond beam on the second to last row, last row there, okay? So you can see there's three rows down there, one, two, and then this is the third one here. I'm actually, you can see my box here for my door. We're flush with the top here. I'm gonna lay the concrete blocks over here in a very interesting way. I'm gonna break them out and I'm gonna make my own linting. Lintel, excuse me. Um, so I just boxed in. I haven't put this in yet. I'm gonna tie it down, but I just put that in. I don't even know what kind of a door I'm gonna do yet, but um, of course this has to be pulled out this way. But anyway, so that's gonna be my door. So we're getting there, guys. I'll update you soon. So to confirm, the first four rows I did uh, two rows at a time, uh, and then the fifth, uh, excuse me, the first six rows, then the seventh row uh, I did by itself, and then the eighth, ninth, and tenth row I ended up uh, pouring all at once, uh, again by hand. So you can see here, um, the door is framed, I tied it in, I, I screwed through the cement of course, and I really tucked that down good. Now I'm building the linton uh, and um, putting in um, the rebar. You can see from the top here how that wood set in there. That worked out really well. And you can see the rebar there. Again, I was planning on going up 11 rows. but I mean, uh, yeah, 11 rows, but I ended up only going 10. And thank God for that because I wouldn't have had any way to get on top of that and do that uh, work I needed to do. So you can see the uh, rebar coming up over and going all the way down to the left hand side and then going down that side too. So there's a solid piece of rebar that goes over that door. So if anything tries to come down on it, it's really set in there well. The rebar on each of the sides and here's another video that's going to take you through it just a little bit in more detail. Okay, so I'm making my own linton, uh, lintel. 
So what I did was, I've got uh, just the blocks hammered out, amen? And I went straight through the other side, just like I did to this side, and I tied them in down the bottom, amen? So you got it over the door here. Sorry about the camera work here, but I got it over the door, and I'm making my own lintel. Praise the Lord. See, that's all I do with the blocks. I just hammer them out. Then I'm going to fill them with cement that'll be solid as a rock. Boxed in the lintel. I'm going to show you from above here. Let me get up top. Just a couple pieces of plywood. And then you can see I've got my... I'm going to put a piece of steel right above that now. And we're going to put it right on top. So I have the top and you saw the bottom before which is down there that goes into the blocks below, amen? All right, so I poured that, it came out wonderful. You'll see, you'll see the finished product later. And now I'm gonna explain how we're moving on. Uh, this is the quick wall that we put on. I'm gonna explain it a little more in the video uh, clip coming up. Well, it's late night, early morning, and I'm here and the walls have hardened from the quick wall being applied about eight hours ago. Boy, I'll tell you. That's just an amazing, strong finish. So the inside is done, and now I'm going to spray it with a fine mist. Amen. You want to spray it about eight hours after you apply it. Just a little quick spray, you know, amen. And then uh, let it sit, and then do that two or three times a day for the next three or four days, and you'll have the strongest finish uh, you can probably buy. I was going to wait to do the quick wall on the inside and outside at the same time, but I remembered that I had to put the roofing uh, joists on, and it would be hard to get it to the top with those sitting right on the concrete. So I decided to do that first, and then I'm going to show you a quick here video clip of um, the progress on the roof. came out really good. So we're back. You can see I framed the top with 5.6 uh, wood here. And all the way around, amen. Put a bunch of screws all the way through. Our quick wall is looking awesome. I'm keeping it wet. And you see how I tied them into the, of course I've got to bend that rebar down so under the wall. But I'm just tying in now my five by sixes as we put these up there. So as you can see here, just tying them in, simple stuff. I don't need to go through this much. But anyway, we're gonna do that. And we're gonna put our, um, reinforcements in between and I'll be back. All right, so as you can see, um, I put the uh, two by six um, roof joists uh, on each of those um, two by fours that I set into the concrete, amen, and then I've got my five quarter inch deck board, I was tired, um, around the outside, which worked out really well. And then I put my um, reinforcement here. I used mostly the 2x6s and tied them in. And then I also used some 2x4s on the outside. I kind of did some reinforcements here. And I'll explain that in the next video clip here real quick. So, um, But you can see it here on the corners and stuff and on the outside. Just to give the plywood more meat to grab onto. Okay, be back. So this is a couple of days after we put the quick wall in. As you can see, it's curing. And now put the roof rafters on, the uh, flat roof rafters here, and now I'm putting the cross braces. Very simple, I don't have to make this video too long, but we're throwing them in. I've got a few more to do over here. I'm gonna knock down this rebar a little bit since I'm only going up 10 rows instead of 11. It's a little bit too high. I can't put uh, the, um, of course you can't put the, uh, plywood on the roof. Gonna put plywood, three quarter inch plywood, then uh, five eighths of an inch um, a cement board on top of the three quarter plywood. I'm gonna bring the cement board over the side too so then I can just quick wall the whole sides. All right, we'll update in a little bit. All right, you can see here that I put five eighths of an inch <laughs> um, concrete board, some people uh, there's a brand name called Hardy Backer Board. I didn't use that, but this is simply concrete board. You can see I have it all on the top now, and in the video coming up, you'll also see I wrapped it around the side. So 
so far everything's uh, looking so good so uh, here's the next video I didn't take a video halfway through putting the plywood on but I put the plywood on and pieced it where I had to and put two full eight foot sheets on and then now I'm putting on the final touches here I'm gonna be I put it on the um, concrete board okay the cement board and then on the side here I'm gonna put a piece of cement board all the way up so I have all cement because the quick wall only adheres to cement amen so we have to have cement it's the bits it's best if you just have it on cement so as you can see here I'm gonna put the cement board right up against there so I have my block down here my wood I'm gonna cover with cement and of course now over the I put the plywood on the top three-quarter inch plywood now I'm putting five-eighths inch um, uh, cement board and then I'm gonna put the quick wall all the way over and around it to completely encapsulate it and you know like we did down here you remember that's the inside you remember the quick wall okay I'll be back all right so I pieced all the um, concrete boards on top. I've screwed most of them down, but not all of them. I just ran out of gas, so that's what the top looks like. I gotta take the day off tomorrow and do some work at some other place, but uh, I'll be putting the concrete on here to butt up against the concrete blocks. And then we're gonna do the quick wall on the outside and the top, and we should be near completion, but the homemade door I'm gonna make. Don't know how I'm gonna do that yet, but we'll keep you updated. All right, so the structure basically here, other than the door, of course, is complete. And I completely wrapped it in uh, that cement board. And now it's ready for the quick wall. So we'll get the next video going. And you can see the progress uh, that has been made after this. All right, well, I have the top done, as you can see, with the backer board. So now I have, I'll back up a little bit here. So I have it completed now, other than the quick wall on the outside. So we've got our 10 rows. We leveled it at the first row with some mud and uh, went all the way up with concrete, excuse me, set it in. Now I've got my backer board up top. Here you can see my door. And you remember again, we're gonna put the quick wall. This is drying now, let me get into here. See if it can, uh, I can't make it good, here we go. You can see the quick wall dries a nice gray. Um, you can color it too if you want. But let me go up. So I've got my exhaust pipe here. I just found a piece of literal exhaust or manifold from uh, the previous owner of this house left it. So I got all my, I'm gonna blow that off to make it, uh, get all those little chunks off of there so it's ready for the quick wall. So now it's completely encased in concrete either block or concrete board. So now the quick wall will um, adhere to it. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna make my door yet. It's gonna be hurricane and tornado proof. But anyway, I'm making progress. That's the update for today. Thanks for watching. Okay, as I explained in that video clip, I just found a piece of uh, exhaust here. And it's a very strong steel. Um, so I put that up there. That's gonna be uh, used um, as you'll see in the, in the next video clip or the couple of video clips from now, I'm going to put the uh, extension cord I'm going to use for the generator through there. There's my outlet for the portable AC. You can get portable AC. It's really inexpensively, a couple hundred dollars or so, $250. And there's a completed project. Uh, that is the quick wall that is done, completely done on the outside now. It starts off to be a darker color, but it will dry gray. And uh, just want to reiterate it's very important that you spray that down eight hours or so after you put it on and then a few times a day for a few days all right well this is the final day of mortar basically the whole outside is quick walled as you can see i just completed it trust me i'm not making it look perfect as long as that stuff has covered it and i also did the i don't know if i did an update yesterday but I also did the roof yesterday, the top of it. So everything is now completely encapsulated in quick wall, quick creek, quick wall. And between filling this and putting a, and there's my door opening, that's completely covered. I even put some cement over there. And then of course the inside. So we're completely covered. I'll update is the exhaust 
And of course I have my exhaust for my portable air conditioner here. Okay, we'll update soon. Okay, so don't forget to spray it down too. Um, after eight hours and then maybe um, two or three times a day for two or three days. That's what I do anyway. Bye-bye. All right, well, there I am uh, standing outside it. This was the most labor-intensive part of this, although we're going to be on, going on to the door now, which wasn't, um, you know, it included a lot of labor too. Actually, the, it included quite a bit of labor, so I was maybe celebrating a little too early, but uh, there's the door I made. It's uh, two by sixes that I reclaimed from the previous owner of this house, and there's the ball-bearing uh, hinges that I chiseled in there. Okay, so I just made or uh, making the door. I'm not done, but as you can see, I've gotten some pressure treated two by sixes, and I first cut the plywood here, and then all I did was glue the wood, and of course, I'm going to screw it all over. So that's going to be my door. Praise the Lord. And now I'll show you what I did over here. The quick wall is drying real nice. And so here I've put in my heavy duty ball bearing um, hinges. Amen. And I even glued those in too. So that's going to be where the door goes. We'll update in a bit. For not knowing what I was going to really do with this door, I really think it came out quite well. It's really solid. I put on a few pieces of steel there. I'm going to explain that in the video coming up. But um, again, I had no idea. I, I went online to even look to see on, you know, YouTube University or anywhere online to build a door. And most of them were like, you know, fancy doors or I even looked to maybe build a concrete door, but I only found a few videos from India that they had, the, again, fancy doors made out of concrete, but I ended up with this, and I'll tell you, at the end of the day, uh, I really believe that if something comes through here, then then uh, we have a storm that probably I, I wouldn't want to be on the earth far anyway uh, at the end of it, so uh, I've reinforced it really well. I'm going to go through uh, just a couple of video clips here discussing the door, because, uh, you know, your shelter is as strong as the weakest point, which would be uh, an opening. All right, and as you can see, I bought some 12 inch cane bolts. I'm gonna show them to you. The quick wall continues to set up and dry nicely. We've watered it down over the course of a few days. Here's my initial door. As you can see here, I used pre-purposed pre wood there and I made that door. Now I'm putting in the stops, as you can see, for it to come up against so in case something hits it. I'm also going to put steel on the inside and outside, just a uh, roofing steel. So if something gets through that, we're in trouble. So I'm, of course I'm going to put the, that over here too. So these are the cane bolts right here, which will go right down into the cement down there. So we're making progress. We'll be back. Made some great progress today. Uh, put the new door on, and I put the hardware on it. I put sheet, two sheets of roofing steel on the front of it too to give it more strength. And I also put a a border around it too, so we're pretty much airtight in there. I'll maybe get it a little bit better as I go along. But so that's the door. Amen. And then you can see just again, I put the two by sixes, the plywood here. And then the inside, just put a little handle. And all around it, of course, I put, I trimmed it out and I put a bunch of screws in here. So if there's forward push on the door, that's going to happen there. I also put some large pieces of steel there. You can see in the top and the bottom that, that go right into the cement so I can lock that down that way. My last part is going to be to put eye bolts coming out. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, and then down the bottom seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to put rebar just coming in from the side right through the eye hooks. I'll close this tight, you know, measure it 
and then that'll be an incredibly tight, and that will serve as a last layer of protection also for maybe any projectiles coming in too. So things are looking good. I think the um, quick wall has really started to um, cure in here. Well, it's getting fuzzy, but you can see in this corner a little bit better. So I'm pretty happy with how this all came out. I'll be finishing off this video shortly. And the final part of the door was to put in, uh, I came up with eye bolts. These are eight inch eye bolts. I went right through the door, as you'll see on the other side, heavy duty washers. And uh, I have a little video explaining uh, what I did. All right, basically the final touches here are gonna be the eye hooks. I just installed one of them here, as you can see. And I'm gonna put a rebar, one, two, and then three down below, down here. So I'm just starting to screw those in now. Well, just about at the end of the job, my bolt cutter broke. Uh, I was trying to, well, I actually was successful in um, cutting a few of the half inch rebar. I'm using uh, 5 8 inch rebar, however, in a lot of this structure. So this is 5 8 of an inch rebar I'm using on the inside, but didn't that come out? really good i mean if something gets through that door if that door gets sucked off uh that's a storm again i probably don't want to be around far when uh, the destruction uh you know is done amen and here is the last piece of the puzzle i just put some um metal flashing there um i used the roof panels i just cut the roof panels up a little bit so when i see the rebar on the top there i didn't do all three for the video but uh, so that will stop it from eating away at the uh, concrete there, because it will after a while. Well, we are at the end of our storm shelter build here, amen. The final piece I did, as you can see my door here, uh, I put in some heavy duty eye hooks, six of them. So how this is gonna work, uh, obviously the, 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 the closed door, amen. So I'm gonna put three across. I'm not gonna do that now because I don't want the video to be too long, but they go one, two, three. It will add a little extra protection of, uh, you know, projectiles coming in or whatever. So I'll put some steel plates over here too. So angel sliding. So just to reiterate, we have done a complete block, uh, concrete block structure, filled it in with cement. We're up 10 rows high with eight by eight by 16 block. I put in rebar, every other one, one in each corner. I also put a vertical rebar, uh, four in between four and five. And I also put a vertical rebar here. On the bond beam that I made, this is still concrete block. I, I um, framed in my door with two by sixes. I sunk them into the concrete, as you can see here. So that's really strong, I'm very happy with that. I also put a uh, five by eight rebar going up and around and cemented it in. Obviously we have rebar here and we have rebar here going all the way down. So uh, we can look up here. I use two by sixes for my joists. Um, then I have a three quarter inch plywood on the top. And then on top of that, I put a five eighths of an inch concrete board. And then um, I'm gonna go outside and show you the rest. So here we go. All right, so out here, uh, I'm gonna close the door. As you can see, I put the bolts all the way through for the eye bolts. I put uh, lock screws on them and washers. So I put two layers of uh, steel out here. I just used some repurposed steel that was in the barn. I just bought this house and that was there. So I put two layers uh, on there. Um, and uh, you can see out here is a quick wall. I'm gonna put quick wall does not, I framed in this door with a two by six. Quick wall does not adhere well to wood. So my last steps, which I'm not gonna include in this video, will just be to trim this out with a piece of maybe one or two inch steel all the way around and I'll cover that wood, okay? So anyway, that's a complete structure. I hope you enjoyed this. Oh, last two things. Um, up here, we have the, um, I put just a piece of pipe as an exhaust. It's also gonna be a place where I'm gonna put in my electrical cord. I'm gonna build a little place out here for my um, generator. And if you come around here, I forgot to show you inside, but I think you've seen it. I just put a hole here for a portable uh, air mover and dehumidifier and air conditioner. Just one of those $200 jobs because it gets really hot in there. We're in Florida and it is hot and it's hot. So I thank you so much for watching my video. Um, I hope you learned something and I hope you stay. 
for the rest of this video, which is way more important than uh, somebody just building uh, a 20,000 pound concrete shelter by himself. Amen. God bless you. And I hope Jesus is the head of your life. Amen. Thank you so very much for watching. I really, truly appreciate it. You know, I looked online for videos, YouTube and whatnot, other social media sites, and I couldn't find anything that was really satisfactory. So I really hope that this um, shed some light uh, on how to build a storm shelter. I'm not a pro, by the way. Um, certainly, I've done some construction throughout my life and other things. I'm a pretty handy man, but um, certainly don't take this uh, build this physical concrete shelter build for gospel truth. But I am going to give you some gospel truth now. You need a shelter for eternity. Amen? We're not talking about a silly little storm shelter on earth here that might shield you from some wind and some projectiles, but you need a shelter um, for eternity, and his name is Jesus. Amen? There's only one way to heaven, people, and I really encourage you to listen to me for just a few more minutes here. Um, not just uh, maybe 15 years ago, I was a heathen, $1,000 a week in cocaine and 25 to 30 alcohol drinks a day and a big businessman making millions of dollars and spending millions more. I'm going to put the link here to my book. I wrote a book. Uh, just the first couple pages tells you about my past life and the rest is all biblical truth and I encourage you to read it. I'm also the... Um, uh, founder and volunteer at a uh, worldwide ministry. We do um, uh, evangelism, preaching the gospel, of course, and also helping the orphan and the widow and the least of these in Africa and Asia. Of course, we help people all over the world, including the United States, but predominantly we do our work overseas. I mean, but we preach the gospel everywhere. I mean, we only support indigenous missionaries. We don't go on one and two week mission trips. We, we're the real deal. Amen. We support true godly um, brethren uh, that are really preaching the gospel and obeying the Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, again, about 15, 16 years ago was at the end of my um, multi, multi-year run of doing drugs and alcohol, and I tried AA and NA and all this other worldly stuff, psychiatrists, psychologists, and counselors, and even as late as 2012, I believed the lies of the world. I was a false Christian from 2006 till 2012. I was radically saved in 2006. For six months I was abiding in the Lord <clears throat> and then because of stupidity and false pastors and all this other stuff, the false church system I truly believe, and you'll read that in my book if you choose to read it, that not, over 99% of the churches out there are false. So I got out of that false church system. I got into a real uh, relationship with Jesus Christ, amen, who is God and my life really turned around in 2012, uh, late 2012, early 2013. There was a season of sorrow I went through there. And what was amazing is I almost succumbed to the worldly psychiatrists and psychologists. Of course, I called them witch doctors. I was on lithium, risperidone, Abilify, you know, Prozac, which is um, phylloxetine, you know, and it goes on and on. I was on so many pills and this and that. And I believed the lies that I had this fake thing called mental illness. And here's the link for that, okay? Please visit this page. If you or you know someone that is depressed or anxious, I've gone to the hospital uh, for those things probably well over 15, 20 times. I can't even recall. I've had um, 15 surgeries in my life. I got to a terrible car accident in 1993. I've had uh, 13 ankle surgeries alone. I've got also screws in my right uh, hand. I have I've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and all this other stuff. And I wanted to encourage you today because the strength I have certainly doesn't come from this broken body. I mean, it's because the Holy Spirit dwells in me. And I want that for you too. So I do encourage you to click on the links that I have put here and really, really, really read them. I'm always available. My email is at the bottom there, jmiller at globalmissionforchildren.org. The letter J, last name Miller at globalmissionforchildren.org. And please, don't believe the lies that are on the internet. You know, you just have to say this quick sinner's prayer and all this stuff. I had come to believe that in the beginning. And uh, I was a lukewarm, false Christian heading to hell. Uh, believing that God loved me in my wicked, wretched sin. So um, after all these lies and after all this wretchedness that I did, I was still able to be saved. And that hope is there for you too. So again, 
it's one thing to build a storm shelter that's going to protect you from the elements. Um, however, it's another thing to have an eternal shelter, and that's only by the blood of Jesus, that is worthy, and he is righteous, and he can save you if you go to him. Thank you for watching, and to Jesus be all the glory. And last thing, I have also a couple of businesses I run, and in 2012, I'll put that letter here, by the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post that letter. I was told by one of these witch doctors, one of these psychiatrists, that I, would, uh, that I can't work, that I don't have um, you know, any uh, ability to concentrate or anything else. Do you know, that was the last straw for me. I read it over and over again. I said, wait a minute, this isn't me. I can do better than this. I reached out to the Lord again. I got saved. And now, as I said, I run businesses. Uh, but most importantly, I run my ministry. That's that's that, that's my full-time thing. And But my businesses help support the ministry to take care of others. Amen. It's always about others, never about ourselves. So once you remove your feelings, once you crucify your flesh, and once you start really walking with Jesus, all the anxiety, all the sorrow, all the pain goes away. Am I grieved 24-7? Of course I am. 22,000 children die every day from man-made poverty. Did you know that? 22,000 children every single day in this world. Of course, in the third world, mostly. Uh, almost exclusively. Every time you take a breath, a child dies from poverty. In fact, about 1,000 children under the age of 5 years old has died from poverty-related conditions since you if you watch this video in, in totality. 1,000 children since I started this video. And that's, that's just really, really sad. Amen? So, again, thank you for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this, not only to help you build a storm shelter, if that's what you uh, so want to do, but also to find the eternal shelter, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? And to Him be all the glory. Amen. All right, I'm back for just one second. You'll see here the coordination of service letter saying I struggle on concentrating, unable to even do, you know, basic tasks. And here is a list of all the medication that I was taking, not all at once, some of them at different times. I just want to tell you as a testimony, I haven't been on prescription medication for years. Um, I'm eating correctly. Of course, I gave up all the drugs and drinking and all that stuff, but also eat correctly and take some herbs and vitamins too, uh, you know, uh, even have your own garden if you have land and all that type of stuff. So uh, it can be done. You can be healed uh, spiritually and you can feel a lot better physically and get rid of, you know, I've seen diabetes, people stop, you know, drink, you know, all I drink is water. I don't drink soda with, you know, 12 teaspoons of uh, sugar. And then of course the diet soda, for example, is even worse or just as bad causes cancer, all this stuff. Same with sugar, you know, if you have all this added sugar every day. Um, it even gives kids the uh, disease like um, hyperactivity or even sugar causes um, the signs of uh, autism. I mean, all these things can be cured if we just go with God's plan. All right, I'll end it there. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.